Well, shit. I got nothing. I guess else. that about covers it, huh? Yeah, that was a hell of a good time. <laughs> right on. Thanks for uh, thanks for well, doing thank this. You. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking out your time. Well, we're very happy to do it, and thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. I put up this one thing where I was just like, just uh, it was like an open invitation, trying to get people to just want to do it. It's like I got no no responses whatsoever. It's like all right. Yeah. It's like all right. I'm gonna have to go out and just knock on doors then. It's like uh, yeah. So I just you know. Guys don't realize what they're passing up when they pass up this kind of promotion. You know, like like we said earlier, it's symbiotic between us. You have nothing to broadcast if you don't have participants. Participants have no way of getting their stuff out there if people aren't willing to broadcast it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's why. That's why we've always made it a policy, great or small. We respond to people who respond to us. You know, so good or bad, you know, fun or not. We've had some interviews that went a little south occasionally, and we've had some great ones. But but they all, gosh, it's just a few more people hearing of you and hearing what you do. Yeah. You know yeah. and. If it's a lot of people, great. And if it's a few people, great. We've had, Pat was playing a uh, uh, a show on a Monday night in the Mason Jar nightclub here in Phoenix many, many, many years ago. And it was a favorite show to the owner because we, we luckily, were always a Saturday night headlining band. But occasionally he'd have somebody bail on him or something. So he'd, he'd, he'd beg his, his, his band if they'd fill in on a Monday night. He nicely agreed. Halfway through the set, he comes and gets me. And and we're playing to essentially the bar. Probably 30 people. The people that work there and maybe maybe 30 people, right? So he goes, come with me, come with me. Right now, somebody real wants to talk to you. You've got to listen to this guy. So I go over there, and I'm like, introduce myself. And he said, so. He said, tell me about your band. So I did. And then he said, tell me about your singer. And and so I told him a little bit about him, and, and he said, do you think he can sing Ozzy Osbourne music? And I said, wow, he loves Ozzy music. When he sings it, I said, truly, I can't differentiate between the two of them. He's got it nailed. And he said, can I speak with him after the show? So show's over. I go bailing over to the property, sitting there on the side trying to catch his breath. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, come with me. Come with me right now. I said, you got to come meet this guy. This guy's real. And I'm going to turn the story over to Prop. So I get up, and back then I used to take a chalice of theatrical blood and pour it down me during the show. And I wore like a butcher's apron. I was covered in blood. I was smoking a cigar, and, you know, it was after the show. I was just kind of chilling. And this was at the Mason Jar in January of 1997. And as I'm walking towards the bar, Franco, the owner, runs up to me and he goes, Dude, listen to me. This man is here. I know this man, he's real, and he's going to do something good for you. I said, okay, you know, it's kind of weird, you know. So I walk up to this guy, and he shakes my hand. He says, how you doing? My name is John Baxter, and I manage Rob Holford. And right away, I'm like, oh, my God, Rob Holford from Judas Priest. This guy's his manager, you know. And he said, you've got a hell of a band there. And I said, hey, thanks a lot. And he said, the problem is I'm not looking for a band. And I said, well, what are you looking for? And he said, a vocalist. And I thought to myself real quick, this guy has Rob Holford already. What could he possibly need? And I said, for what? <clears throat> and he said, for Black Sabbath. And right away, I felt all the blood drain out of my legs. <laughs> and I said, could you repeat that? <laughs> and he said, for Black Sabbath. He said, very few people know, but Rob joined Black Sabbath recently, and they were planning to record an album and do a world tour, but... Rob and Tony had a falling out, and for the last six months, uh, Tony has been auditioning vocalists, and he doesn't like any of them. And I watched your whole show. I watched how you move and you're singing, and you remind me a lot of Ozzy. And he said, do you think you could sing Black Sabbath music? And I said, yeah, it's one of my favorite bands. And he goes, well, would you be interested in auditioning for Black Sabbath? And, you know, the whole thing was just so surreal, even hearing someone say that to me, you know. And I said, sure. And he gave me his card, and it was a Monday night, and he said, call me on Friday, and I'll let you know where I'm at with the audition. He called Rob. And, yeah, while I was standing there with him, he called Rob, who was in L.A. at the time, and right in front of me, he said, Rob, I think I truly found the guy for the Sabbath gig. And when he got off the phone, he said, Pat, I really think if you audition for him, you're going to get the gig. 
And if you get the gig, you're going to put me and Rob in good standing with Tony again, so you're going to be helping us as well. Wow. And so for like four days, I barely slept, and I was, <laughs> you know, nervous, and it never left my mind. And I called him on that Friday, and he goes, Pat, you're not going to believe what happened. And I said, what? And he said, Ozzy, just like in the last couple of days, agreed to rejoin Sabbath, and they're going to do a tour. And that's when Ozzy came back to Sabbath after being away since 1978. So, you know, half of me was jumping up and down going, oh, my God, Ozzy's back in Sabbath. You know, I was happy. And then the other half of me, I was bummed out thinking, man, you know, yeah. I was that close to an audition with Sabbath. And whether I would have got the audition or not, it would have just been a huge honor to get to play a song with those guys, you know. Yeah, no and, doubt. And, um, but, you know, it was a huge honor that Rob Halford's manager would approach me in a place like the Mason Jar. But that just goes to show you, and I tell bands this always, even when you have a small audience, give it all you've got because you never know who one of those people are that's in that audience. And that's what happened to me. There were 30 people in the whole club. We went in there and did our show, and lo and behold, one of them was Rob Holford's manager. <laughs> that's a cool story. That is really it was cool. awesome. It was, it was an honor. Yeah. Wow. Very intense week. That is awesome. Well, you just never know. That's for yeah, sure. Give them yeah. hell. <laughs> All the time. Yeah, that's why when we play a show, I I give it all I've got, you know, and, and I've always done that and I always will. Well, shit. That was awesome. You got anything else you want to talk about? Yeah. No, and I think you already got like an hour and a half interview. <laughs> <laughs> Right on. <laughs> you had a good life in music, no doubt about it. Yes. We've been very fortunate and worked really hard and had a lot of that work pay off. Nice. Well, thank you, sir. Well, thank you, guys. That was some that was some awesome fun, and uh, you're always welcome back anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll absolutely. be glad to come back whenever you need it. Nice. Well, hell, that was an awesome night and uh, a killer interview. Have a great night. You too. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, let us know when you've got it cut and posted. Yeah, we'll post it. We'll, around. we'll spread it around. Yeah, hell, when I get it all done, I'll, I'll probably email you a copy. Cool, yeah, that'd right be on. awesome. Yeah, yeah, we'll promote it. That way, you can do whatever you want with it. Very cool. <laughs> Yeah, we even use clips from stuff. We've done that before where we had recordings from radio interviews and we actually put them on the record. So. Nice. Well, awesome. Thanks again, you guys. And uh, here's to... out there. Keep listening to the graveyard shift. Yeah. And I, all I can do is hope for another uh, another 25 years of... Oh, you'll be doing your 25th anniversary concert coming up, so we'll, yeah. you know, maybe we'll, we'll see you at the 50th. <laughs> right on so thanks again guys this is Prophet from the band Saint Madness and you're listening to the Graveyard Shift metal to the death and beyond nice thanks dude <laughs>